In this video, I'm going to show you a quicker way to customize pre-made motions in Cartoon Animator. So in this demonstration, I'm going to show you a variation on my technique called bracketing, and I'll put a link to that clip in the description where I showed you how you can modify a motion clip without messing up the rest of the clip by doing this bracketing technique. Uh, this is similar to that technique, but it's easier to remember and it actually helps fix a common problem that new cartoon animator users often run into, which is modifying a motion and then seeing that the rest of the motion has been completely messed up by those modifications. So that'll become more clearer as as we move along and you'll see what I mean but for now I'm starting with this character from the free resources called Roger and this is his side view or three-quarter side view not his actual side view and I'm going to apply a running jump motion to him and to do that I have to go into an animation pack that you can buy in the store but I wanted to use this pack because it has a running jump motion and I can really show you or demonstrate with this pack how modifying a motion clip can really mess up the entire clip so it's this G3 human motions mission moves pack and we'll go into that we'll go down into the mission move should be in the stunt folder looking for a run forward and jump motion right, run jump forward one is the motion i'm going to apply here so i'm just going to double click with my character selected and apply that motion you see he jumped immediately off screen and you'll notice the timeline moved down here what i'm going to do is open the timeline first and then set this flag to be the length of the clip just by clicking the set end frame button here and you'll notice that flags moved from there up to here now i'm going to go to the start bring him back on the stage and then i'm going to use the camera and position him so that this whole clip stays within this view we'll just scroll this out you see he's running along does a jump lands and then runs off that's the motion we're going to be modifying and we'll make sure this is selected just so that the actual active item that we've got selected always shows in the timeline even though he's this character is our only item on the stage at the moment and we're going to open up the motion track where you can see this run jump forward motion is in here what i'm going to do is let's just say for a second i wanted him to run and jump and at the peak of his jump he makes like a cross formation so peak there we'll make him start doing a cross formation just a few frames before the peak so at about this point now a lot of beginners when they go in trying to modify motions they'll do this exact thing they'll choose the frame and they'll open up the 2d motion key editor and just start moving away at motion so that's what i'm going to do click on here and we're going to get him into this formation that i want him to be in go as quickly as i can they want this leg to come down want to come around and just noting that when we're doing this in the 2d motion key editor we want to be on full body for set key options so that down in the timeline with every move we're making the keys being set are for the full body and not just the uh, limb that we're moving at the moment so let's get that and we'll make his foot go back a little bit so say we want him to do that formation and then he's going to continue on and land his jump but having done that, I'll move the motion key editor out of the way so that you can see exactly what the problem is. I've got him in the exact formation I want, but now when I move the timeline, it's kind of, oh dear, that back leg on way up there. And if I keep going forward, like what the heck is going on there? We've just messed up every single thing about that motion and this modification hasn't worked however you can fix this with this new bracketing technique that i've sort of discovered and you do it by using the reset key here and again you want to make sure it's on full body for this and what you would do the way this reset key works is it resets a character back to the original frames 
in the original motion clip. So not resetting him back to a standing pose or anything like that. It resets him to whatever the keyframes should be at any particular point in the clip. So we'll move this out of the way. Let's say that looks to be about where he started to jump from. And as we're going into that sort of movement that we set up custom movement that we set up that's looking okay so let's say from there we just hit the reset button and you'll see that's reset the whole character put in a load of keys there and move this over you'll see now if i scroll back to the beginning of the clip with the playhead it's now back to exactly how it should be before we made our changes and you'll see if we go forward character will start to move into the position that we had now you'll notice this back arm is doing something really weird it's probably not the way we wanted to get it into that position sort of winding behind him we really want that to come out forward uh, but we'll fix that up in a minute now just know that we fixed that front part of the clip and to fix the end you see it's still all over the place which is not what we want we just decide roughly where we think he would start to come back into his landing and let's say maybe about four frames after this point and hit the reset key. And you'll see all his limbs are returned back to what they should be in the original clip at that point. We keep going forward. Now he's coming down, landing and running off exactly like he did before we started changing things around. And you'll see also that he still goes into that formation and everything's looking much better now if you think maybe i didn't quite click that at the right spot uh, you can either undo it and move the playhead to the right spot and do reset again or in this transform track here directly under the motion title one here you can just move this keyframe and i'm going to make the timeline a little bit larger so that you can see that all of these keyframes for the whole character were added when we hit the reset button if i select this but this keyframe here and just move that one in that track say there you'll see all of these keyframes moved with it so if you didn't get it right the first time you can just move these around same here and even move keyframe that i actually customize all these keyframes will move with it and this one as well so there we go and if i look at the little clip bigger so if we're happy roughly with how that is play it through from the beginning you can see he's got Kind of a bit of a skip there going into it we'll stop that but as we said before that back arm is not really going the ideal way we want it so what we can do get the arm and on the next frame after we did the re first reset so it's going the wrong way so let's just turn that so that it's moving in the direction that we want and you see now that arm is coming up in the right direction it's not going behind him again when he's jumping down now it's going behind him there we don't want that to happen so let's say maybe we'll try the frame immediately after our custom frame bring it down that way and that's fixed it for when he's landing there you go that's an easy way to customize motion clips by using the reset key and it fixes that problem where if you've accidentally made modifications on a frame and then notice that everything is messed up with that clip you can just hit the reset button at either side of the point that you're editing to try and bring in that motion and it will fix everything right up again So hopefully you were able to follow along uh, i might have a go at one more demonstration just so that you can see how this works i'm going to start with a new project and get another actor from the free resources we'll get maybe red here and we'll go back into the mission moves pack see what we can find for red try this backflip motion zoom in on that a little bit see what it looks like not the timeline set the end point again so that we've just got that bit see what she's doing so it's a backflip so 
what about after she does her backflip, we make her do a superhero landing. So she's going to jump, backflip, come down, and from that point, it's coming back up. But what about if from that point, before she comes up, she ends in a superhero landing out there. So we'll open up 2D motion key editor. And in order to do a superhero landing, I'm going to lock her feet, bring her arm down. I need to really crouch down. Turn at the hips a lot more. Get her down. We want to get her hand really flat on the ground. A bit more there. Then bring her neck up, bring her head up. And now she's doing more of a superhero landing. And again, as you'll see, we scrub back into the rest of the movement. Everything's been messed up. Sort of not looking quite as graceful as she used to. And when she stands up, she looks a bit like she's really thrown her back out. So that's not what we want. So we know about that point, she's coming back down again. So somewhere around there, that's where we can hit the reset button. There. We'll bring her into a superhero landing. And then she's starting to go back up at about that point. So maybe we'll hit the reset key just there. And that's fixed how she's looking. We wanted her to hold that landing just for a moment. Should be able to just copy this key here. Copy and paste here. You'll see that's pasted all the keys down the timeline. And if we play this, I've, I've got it on loop at the moment, so. And we could even at our break, at our point here, could break that open. And maybe move that clip along. So that she holds that pose for even longer. There you go. I hope you're able to follow along with that demonstration and grasp this idea of how to customize pre-made motions using the reset button to create the same bracketing effect that I showed you how to do in my previous video but this technique is kind of easier because you just create the motion that you want and then you apply the brackets after instead of applying the brackets first like you do in my original bracketing technique so there you go so i hope you found that demonstration useful feel free to let me know in the comments exactly how it helped you out and if you are facing any particular challenges with cartoon animator feel free to describe them in the comments and perhaps i can make a future video tutorial to help you get past them and don't forget if you are looking for more complete training with Cartoon Animator to check out my Lazy Animator tutorials at thelazyanimator.com uh, where you'll find a number of paid tutorials for beginners and novice Cartoon Animator users. So that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.